Under the current Archbishops of Canterbury and York, the leadership of the House of Bishops in the Church of England has now failed. The House of Bishops has failed to lead spiritually. Above everything else, responsibility of a bishop in the Church of England is to uphold the truth of Jesus' teaching and thus to preserve the unity of the Church and the Church's witness. Jesus prays for future generations of believers on the night before his crucifixion. He prays that future disciples will be united as they put their trust in him on the basis of his apostles' teaching. He says this, I do not ask for these, that is the apostles, only, but also for those who will believe in me through their, the apostles, word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you've sent me. So not only the unity, but also the witness of the Church of Christ is grounded on the faithful teaching of the apostles' words. And bishops above all else are responsible for upholding this teaching in the church. They promise, when made bishop, to uphold apostolic teaching. They're asked, are you ready to drive away all erroneous and strange doctrine contrary to God's word? They reply, I am ready. And so the vast majority of the House of Bishops of the Church of England have failed spiritually. This failure of spiritual leadership has been recognized internationally. The Global South Fellowship of Anglican Churches and the Global Anglican Future Conference, representing over 75% of Anglican believers worldwide, have recognized the failure. The Global Anglican Future Conference described their leadership as blasphemous. So the House of Bishops of the Church of England have failed to lead spiritually, but they have also failed to lead practically. The Living in Love and Faith project was conceived on the flawed premise that it's possible for those with views contrary to the apostolic faith to walk together with those who uphold apostolic truth. And now this not only runs counter to scripture, but it also runs counter to all common sense. But the Living in Love and Faith project was also pursued in a flawed manner, with prayers being presented to the General Synod in February prior to any thought through and worked out pastoral guidance for their use. And now we hear that the three so-called implementation groups formed after the presentation of the prayers of love and faith have been disbanded. So under the Archbishops of Canterbury and York, the leadership of the House of Bishops of the Church of England has failed both spiritually and practically. As I speak here in the City of London, I'm surrounded by significant financial institutions that are household names both across the country and across much of the world. Banks and insurance companies and legal and accountancy firms and hospitals and charities. Were these institutions to suffer levels of leadership failure such as we have witnessed in the Church of England, it would result in wholesale loss of confidence and substantial boardroom restructuring. In the event of failed institutional leadership, if an institution is to survive, new leadership needs to emerge from those in the front line of operational activity. Now, we've witnessed this in areas of the National Health Service. We've witnessed it in areas of education. In the First World War, it was the lions on the front line, not those who led them, 
who brought victory. Following the General Synod of February, significant numbers of churches entered what our friends in the Church of England Evangelical Council called protest mode. Funding has been withdrawn. Partnership with the House of Bishops has been broken. Churches have made it clear that diocesan bishops are no longer welcome to exercise ministry amongst their congregations. Wardens have been admitted without diocesan bishops' involvement. And alternative arrangements have been made for ordinance. All of this has been helpful in making clear to the House of Bishops that their failed leadership is no longer welcome in our churches. On their own, however, such protest measures can only express a rejection of the failed leadership on offer. And what is needed now is for new structures to arise as those biblically faithful leaders in local leadership of local churches act together to secure faithful future ministry and faithful leadership of Church of England congregations apart from the failed leadership from the House of Bishops. This is why the steps being taken by the city deanery chapter here in the city of London are so heartening. Their recent video stresses how easy it is for a group of clergy to set up a chapter and to start to provide new leadership within the Church of England. This new way of selecting and training leaders, of recognizing the ministries of those leaders across congregations, together with making necessary new financial arrangements, will be the key to establishing structurally differentiated ministry in the Church of England in the light of the failed leadership within the institution. No doubt different groupings will establish similar but different forms of the same kind of thing. Not every grouping will operate in the same way, nor should they. But we can no longer expect to look to the House of Bishops to deliver such gospel realities for us. Their leadership has failed. They are neither willing nor able to conceive or provide such structures. Right now, numbers of groups of clergy across the country are preparing to establish chapters of this sort, some at deanery level, some at diocesan or archdeaconry level. Many of these church leaders have been operating in ministry together informally for at least a decade. And over the course of the summer and into the early autumn, these groups of church leaders who've been operating informally in ministry together in local gospel partnerships and local renew groups will now act. By setting up such legal structures, realities on the ground will be established with which senior leaders will have to engage if they are to bring any sort of resolution for the Church of England. And by setting up such legal structures, gospel ministry will be safeguarded in the hands of faithful gospel ministers. Simply waiting and hoping for something satisfactory to arise in November is not adequate and it will leave us unprepared and merely reactive. 